Now, that's what Hillary Clinton's doing. Breaking the law, breaking the law, breaking the law, breaking the law so hardcore and involving all these big government agencies and all these foreign leaders that she thinks she's too corrupt to fail. Like a cancer that's metastasized into the entire body politic. And if you try to cut it out, it's in the lungs, it's in the heart, it's in the bones, it's in the brain. It's in the blood itself until the body politic dies. And by then, Hillary Clinton would have already shuffled off her mortal coil. I will tell you, it is very, very creepy to have a woman who I get triggered by. And, and, and by that, I don't, I don't go into, you know, feministic spasms or hot flashes or anything or... or but when I see Hillary Clinton making joker faces and doing her hyena laugh, and I, and I see her different activities, it, it, it upsets me. My blood pressure goes up. I can just see an image of her when they have the website up on screen, and it's upsetting because this is really a bad person. It'd be like if I had a neighbor who I caught robbing my garage twice and who I caught doing other bad stuff, you get irritated seeing that neighbor. I've had neighbors like that. You know they stole your bike. You catch them. They claim they don't know why uh, your bike is in their backyard and their kid's using it. Then you catch them robbing you again. You just move out of the neighborhood. Or you see them move and you go, oh, thank God, and you talk to their landlord and they weren't paying their rent. We had some juvenile delinquent when I was a kid in, in Dallas. When we, we moved when I was five. But it was a blue-collar neighborhood, upper you know, blue-collar but still blue collar, and he was robbing stuff and, and, and breaking into things. And he finally got arrested. But it was just to see his family deny, he was like four doors down, deny it. His name was Joey. Deny and deny and deny the robberies. And then finally he got busted. It's like Hillary is a criminal who's committed all these crimes, and she's there in front of you, and she won't get out of your life. And she won't go away. And I've got real Hillary Clinton fatigue. They just put her on screen right there. That arrogant joker face. I mean, I'll be honest. Watching that Batman movie with the late actor who played the Joker, he looked so drugged out, so upset, so depressed, so crazy that you find it disquieting. I mean, clowns are disquieting. And, and, and that movie irritates me because I don't want to look at the Joker. With Hillary, it's 50 times worse. This woman tortures me. If you wanted to torture me, you'd put me in a cell with TV screens around me with Hillary Clinton giggling like a hyena. And this is who the power structure, who we know is a criminal and has committed all these crimes, and now the Chinese president, she was having people pay for access to him? It just gets worse and worse. It's totally criminal. And what does it say that the mainstream media in unity the mainstream media is covering up for her in mass, and you will go to the New York Times or CNN.com, and I'm telling you, there'll be 50, 60, 70 articles, every one of them attacking Donald Trump. I'm going to hold my guest about 45 after, 40 after, and then and we can take some calls if folks want to hold. If not, drop off, but I'm going to be able to go to your calls for a while. I appreciate you calling in. I'm just... Have to get to our guest. I covered this in the first hour. I have hundreds of articles that are super important. I'll mention some of these, but really front and center is this. <sighs> they have a system of internet censorship used in China. It's an internet ID. It's an internet social score where you basically get blacklisted off the web if you criticize the government or global corporations or groups that the system is protecting. The system ends net neutrality, but not just for traffic going over systems for certain carriers or certain websites or certain outlets. But if you're a patriot, a nationalist, whoever they don't like, you are not allowed to basically even use the internet. DC leaks, website down, Twitter suspended after releasing Soros docs, daily caller, linked on Infowars.com. An internet giveaway to the UN. If the U.S. abdicates internet stewardship, the United Nations may take control. They got the four-year documents. That's what it does. We told you. The, the, the U.N.'s been lobbying them for this forever. 
Soros document, regulate internet to favor open society supporters and only let their information out. Push the NGOs, force feed it. Just like you get Obama force feeds on your quote smartphone or your computer. They actually say you'll get force feeds from the UN and it'll be George Soros. Just like they say the UN's now with strong cities gonna direct local police. That's not me embellishing. That's what Loretta Lynch said. It's happening. They're, they're reaching the point of the final construction of this thing. They've already built the foundation and the superstructure. They're loading it up right now. The Pope's meeting with Zuckerberg to discuss all this. It's here. Their globalist Manhattan Project squared. And then you have Huffington Post bans journalists for writing about Hillary's health, deletes article. He's talking about a video that now has 4 million views just on one platform, millions on others. It's been played on Fox News, other channels. It's totally legitimate to cover. He writes an article about it, and they delete it. Again, this just shows how these people operate. There is a criminal instinct, a mob instinct of what you call leftists now that is as far from liberal values this country or world's ever seen. They're about as liberal as a mouse to tongue. That's their, in fact, that's who's popular on the college campuses, but all funded by weirdo rich billionaires that want monopolies, overthrow countries, starve people, put radical jihadis in charge, and you tell the little trendies this, they don't care because they go, I'm with it, I'm with it, even though they're delusional and aren't with it. We have a new Mark Dice video on Infowars.com. Then we're going to our guest. Mark Dice goes out and every idiot he talks to doesn't even know who the vice president is. But they say they're Democrats, so they're intellectual. These people can't find their butts with both hands. But let me tell you something. They know how to run your life. They wreck California. They come to Austin. They, they're so stupid, they don't even know why they're fleeing the place they have soiled. Our guest... One more journalist, written scores of articles over the years for the Huffington Post, been a guest on with us in 2014 in September. Thought criminal, David Seaman, he joins us to talk about this. And, of course, there, there are plenty of stories about McCain's health, plenty of stories about Donald Trump's health, mental health. You can say he's crazy all over the you know, news with no evidence. But he joins us. David Seaman, thanks for coming on. Uh, this is the season of the rollout of censorship. Am I wrong? Talk about what happened to you. Yeah, thank you for having me on, Alex. Uh, and thank you for being one of the first and one of the biggest news sites uh, to cover this, along with a few others. We Are Change got out there front and center as well. But InfoWars was definitely one of them. And when this happened to me, uh, it didn't feel good. You know, there was like a pit in my stomach because this is what I do for a living. I'm a journalist, I'm a pundit, I'm a researcher. Uh, for people who haven't been following me much, I used to appear on a bunch of cable shoot, a bunch of cable shows and shoots. Uh, I was on CNN programs often. Uh, Anderson Cooper once gave me career advice on the air. Uh, I was on Wolf Blitzer where they played a, they played a video of me on Wolf Blitzer that Valerie Jarrett had to respond to, uh, where I was saying that Obama's performance I would rate as a D or an F, and this was some years ago. Uh, but I used to go on Fox News every once in a while, so. Uh, you know, I'm just a media pundit. I'm just a guy who does this stuff. Uh, and I've been doing online media for years, and I've never seen anything like this where your articles are deleted without any prior discussion from an editor who manages you, just deleted late on a Sunday night, and then you log in, and your account has been completely revoked. The gloves are off. I mean, have you ever seen media as just a solid wall of disinformation act like this? I'm, I'm really impressed by their, by their discipline. I mean, this is Nazi-like. Well, the reason why I immediately put out a video uh, explaining what had happened and I put it on my personal YouTube channel, and uh, although the views are, as you know yourself, the views are staggered, the public views, but when I log in, the actual number of views since yesterday is 67,000 views. And so that gave me a lot of confidence that I have some personal safety because I wanted to get the truth out there. It would be very simple after being so dishonest that you would delete two articles that are completely factually correct uh, completely grammatically correct, nothing offensive to minorities, no profane language, not trying to step on anybody's toes, but, you know, bringing up the subject of Hillary Clinton's health 
and linking out to that video, which has been viewed millions of times, not even my own video, not even my own content or research. Uh, it's pretty much just firsthand footage of Mrs. Clinton and of that head spasm or seizure or whatever the experts deem it to be, whatever that is and whatever those other montages were, they are certainly not normal, right? So that's all I was doing is, is raising a bit of awareness with a couple of quick posts that took me 20 minutes. And I had no idea that my, my publishing privileges would be revoked. And there's a real impact on me professionally because not only does it look reputationally bad to be promoting an article that people click on and see it's been deleted and censored away, uh, now I can no longer go to certain conferences and it's gonna be harder to get access to certain sources because I know well, it's okay because what happens is like Cheryl Atkinson getting fired from CBS you get you get another job Maybe we should have you do some contract work for us. We're gonna come right back from break with David Seaman I've uh, written tons of articles from opening posts over the years censored for just saying hey look at this viral video That's what news is supposed to be is hey. This is a big story. What do you think about this? Let's go out to break uh, showing a clip of Hillary's real health no, you Okay She looks profoundly mentally ill there. And it's okay. It's all right. It's all right. Somebody said something to you in the crowd. We'll be back. Since my video went viral and catapulted Hillary's health back into the national spotlight, we've seen more examples of Clinton behaving bizarrely, completely losing her wits mid-sentence. We need to make what we've got work really well and improve it and get the costs out of a upward spiral of a upward spiral nearly falling over again <laughs> referring to Trump as her husband you will compare what I'm proposing to what my my opponent is talking about having to be calmed by a mysterious secret service agent also carries around a weird syringe which some speculate carries an anti-seizure drug the re-emergence of photos from Fe all right let's start fading that down that's another one of his latest viral videos there's there's three or four of them they've got tens of millions of views total we have some breaking news i'll keep mr seaman with us into the next segment uh during the break buckley came in and said hey what do you want to do about this um motherboard the hill they're all calling you and i instantly saw what it was went and talked to our it people and our hacker specialist folks uh, you know, that report on hacking, not hackers, uh, even though we just get the Stingray documents and everything else. But the point is, is that in 2012, it was actually a year before that, we'd know about it for a while, somebody was able to get in and get some real emails of people that had signed up on prisonplanet.tv. But, but that was it. And then they mixed in a bunch of names and other stuff with it and put it out. And, of course, we just told folks about it, and it was a patch and no big deal, thank God. And thank God most hackers are white hat folks that are actually out there exposing, you know, the climate gate and Hillary and George Soros and how they stole the election from Bernie Sanders and so much more. But I tell you, the, the story here is that Motherboard and others got trolled. They're putting this out that this just happened. This happened actually in 2011, and we reported on it in 2012. So that's what's going on. This is how desperate they are to shut us down how desperate they are to engage in economic warfare and try to stir up trouble. And it's why it's more important than ever, flood the site with support, spread the word about our articles and videos, uh, buy the Hillary for Prison shirts at cost right now, uh, shipping and handling and the shirt, nine ninety five, no shipping uh, added. Uh, get BioTrue Selenium, uh, from our research, the very best, most organic selenium anybody can get out there. It's so important in the body. Uh, we've got the vitamin mineral fusion um, amino acid fruit punch that's, that's so important uh, that uh, you give to yourself and your family and others. That's 20% off right now. At InfoWarsLife.com or InfoWarsStore.com. This, this is what I'm trying to explain to people. This is an all-out war going on right now. Going back to a victim of this, where are you going from here now that you dare report on a video that even CNN was reporting on, but you're the little minion. You're not allowed to actually... Talk about it. You'd think the Huffington Post would actually want the traffic generated off of that, but they they have a scorched earth policy now uh, of censorship. What do you make of George Soros's emails coming out that he wants the UN and others uh, to control the web and not let those of us that disagree with them have access and give special treatment uh, to his news organizations like the Huffington Post? It's right here. 
Well, I, I don't know much about the Soros Foundation or him in particular, but I can tell you that my experience with Huffington Post, especially given the fact that they have been so liberal with me, uh, the traditional version of the word liberal, they've been so liberal in what they've allowed me to publish. Uh, and I primarily cover cryptocurrency and gold and uh, sound money stuff. I'm interested in Bitcoin and some of the newer crypto networks like Ethereum that people think will eventually be able to outdo, possibly things like Bitcoin will be able to somehow outdo uh, the corrupt centralized content silos like Facebook, where we all have to store our information and interact with each other, where we're not making any money off of that stuff and where our information is being divulged to, you know, God knows what number of agencies and governments and even corporations. Uh, so that was my focus. This is just a couple of quick posts. And I was blown away that that's the end of your career. That Like, that's the level of arrogance. As you were saying in the last break, there is a level of, of, uh, of just contempt for the average person. Like, I'm just some journalist. We'll just run you over. And you don't have a career anymore. You look like a joke. We'll move on to the next person. We'll find somebody in their early 20s and they'll write this crap moving forward. And that's really toxic. That's really not what America's about. That's not America's heritage journalism-wise, when you go back to people like Edward R. Murrow. That's right, the tyrants are making their move. They're heritage all... the First Amendment. That's right, stay there. I'm gonna come out and give you the floor for about five minutes to roll with all this. Uh, David Seaman, a victim of the massive censorship that is taking place, ladies and gentlemen, because he dared talk about reality and say, look at this big story. It's in mainstream news about Hillary's health. And they're like, bye-bye, down the rabbit hole. This is how they operate, and it's only going to get worse. I want to talk about how we counter this with David Seaman straight ahead. I'm Alex Jones with InfoWars.com. Visit it while you still can. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm sitting here during the break trying to think of words strong enough to describe what we're watching. We're watching a new kind of war, 21st century, technotronic, pre-programmed, systems of censorship and control and we have the emails and the admissions and the, you know, the New York Times telling Facebook censor more kill Donald Trump I mean it's all happening we're seeing a true authoritarian instinct from the so-called left which I know can manifest in the right as well I'm a libertarian even the libertarian party's getting taken over right now by the globalist and our guest David Seaman has been kicked off the Huffington Post for simply talking about the fact that Hillary Clinton's health or non-health issues is one of the biggest stories in the country. That's newsworthy, even if you disagree with it or agree with it. Even though he conformed to writing it very dryly, that wasn't enough. You've got to go along with their agenda. And then it comes out that Dr. Drew, why was Dr. Drew fired, was the number one Google search last week. Because people now know he was fired for saying, I'm worried about Hillary. Uh, you know, she looks bad and... What she's got, the drugs they say they're giving her, it'll kill you. You're not supposed to take them together. So going back to our guest to finish up uh, his points, uh, go ahead, uh, David Seaman. Yeah, Dr. Drew in particular has been with CNN for so long. I think his show has been running for six years. And then, you know, I grew up listening to him on Loveline. Uh, he and Adam Carolla had a radio show. Uh, so to just boot Dr. Drew off the air like that, when what he said was, I thought, quite coherent. You know, the guy is a medical professional. Uh, and, and don't you want a medical expert to sound off on this stuff and not just people like me? You know, it, it makes sense to want to hear what Dr. Drew would have to say. Uh, but anyway, uh, before the break, you'd ask me, I think, like, what, what can we do about this stuff? And I have no idea, really. Obviously, you know, I'm becoming more and more supporter of Trump because I don't see the same kind of manipulation uh, coming out of his campaign and uh, as I joked on Twitter, half joked anyways, uh, even when I criticize Donald Trump, I don't have any fear that he's going to try to kill me or he's going to try to, you know, mangle my career in some way or slow me down. Uh, as we've seen, if Donald Trump doesn't like you, he just calls you out on, on Twitter, on social media, and then picks the bones clean. You know, he, he will completely destroy you, but he's not in the business of, of stacking up a body count. Uh, and I got some very disturbing messages last night from people who I think some were genuinely concerned about my health and well-being after that whole thing. But some people, it seemed like psychological harassment almost, or it was like, oh, you poor little thing. Look, I had Jimmy Kimmel come out like, and say the New World Order is basically going to kill you, Alex Jones, and make it a joke. But he just had a mass murderer on days before who he was defending. See, they're getting off 
on the idea of tyranny, David. So your instinct is absolutely right. Yeah, I think at least 10 to 20 percent of these messages were what I construed as harassment. Uh, it's all happening. You know, I used to think that people like you were crazy. And then gradually I came to the conclusion that you're some of the few people doing real journalism in the United States anymore. Because CNN, that laughing clip of Hillary that you played earlier uh, from Paul Watson's video, that laughing clip of her on CNN, uh, that was Jake Tapper who interviewed her. And as kind of lightweight and useless as that interview was, how useful is it to just have 30 seconds of somebody laughing uh, in such a shrill way? Uh, as, as useless as that sit down was to begin with, it's to sit down with a compromised person. You know, in the DNC leaks that WikiLeaks came out with, uh, you know, I'd argue that the lack of coverage of this latest WikiLeaks batch is probably the biggest news story in the country at the moment. In addition, it's one to of the biggest in a decade, but what's even bigger is that the media is totally ignoring it or spinning it when it's so bombshell and, 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 and unified lying is, is really, it's so lockstep, it's horrifying. It, it is horrifying. It makes you feel like you're on the outside looking in. Uh, and with, you know, Jake Tapper, uh, the nature of that relationship, there he is right there. That's Jake Tapper waving his hand with the sheet of paper. Uh, based on the WikiLeaks emails, he should be out of a job. They can fill that, that show with somebody else very quickly. Uh, he is not irreplaceable. He should be out of a job. He is compromised or his producers are compromised. But it's inappropriate to already be that close with the DNC and then to host an interview where the only question posed is to let her just laugh until the time runs out. She runs out the clock with that absurd laughter. And, uh, you know, there are a lot of people like me who are not going to put our careers ahead of what's right anymore. We're just going to say it as we see it. And uh, it's clear that something is going on. I was about to say, uh, just like when the Nazis started bombing civilian targets, they thought it would make the British give up. It made the British go from not wanting to be in the war to wanting to go into the war. And I don't know why tyrants from Tokyo rose to Hillary Clinton think threatening people, talking about my dark heart, trying to sick her, you know, minions on me, how she thinks is going to make me give up. It's only going to make me fight that much harder and have more energy. I mean, they don't get it. We know you're a mass murderer, Hillary. We know you're a killer. Some of Lydia. us ha have to stand up. And now you've made it so clear for us. There's really, uh, you know, no mistake. Well, listen, I want you to go on doing your journalism, do it on your own, you know, as the censored person, uh, submit pieces to InfoWars. We'd love to carry it. Uh, let us talk to you the next few days about, you know, doing some work with us. Uh, and, you know, that's how you counter these people is we build our own systems. Just like Matt Drudge said, we get out of their internet ghettos. We get out of their systems. I understand using them for a while because they've kind of given themselves the attention, but we're already bigger than they are overall. Let's leave Babylon. Let's come out of Egypt. David Seaman, we'll talk to you again soon. Thank you, and I would love to take you up on that offer. It's you bet. Great. We'll be calling you today. Introducing a new t-shirt, which I think folks need to get, uh, telling the real truth about Bill Clinton, who is a serial rapist and a user of women. In another case, it's about groping and fondling and touching against a woman's will. And rape. And rape. Bill rapes them physically, and then Hillary rapes them psychologically. He's a rapist. Absolutely. He's a public figure. He goes straight to hell. Get your Bill Clinton rape shirt today at InfoWarsStore.com or call 1-800-253-3139.